All right. Oh, Mr. Porcelain, I finished processing the blade letters, sir. All right, let me take a gander at it. Pass it here. Whoa. Maybe don't throw evidence. Okay, looking good. You there, take good care of this. Whoa! Well, if it isn't Detective Gumshoe... In the line for you, Portsman. We got you now. Call up your dog, Mr. Edgeworth. Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. We know, Mr. J Jacques Portman, that you are the guilty party in this case. Uh, you were pretty upset getting chased out of your own room. <laughs> I'd be mad, too. So I guess you can stay if you promise to stay out of our way. You intend to hide your crime under the guise of a prosecutor doing his job. I can see right through the unsightly paper-thin mask you wear upon your cowl. <laughs> Who'd have ever thought I would come to this? Actually, come to think of it, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? <laughs> uh, the legendary prosecutor who never lost a single case for 40 long years. But there was always this incessant chatter about forged evidence with that guy. Really teaches me that I've got to stay on the lookout for false accusations, you know. Are you done trying to play mind games with me? Because they won't work. The only thing you should be using that mouth of yours for now is explaining yourselves. Although that too will only dig your hole deeper. Either way, your game is up. Well, aren't we full of ourselves? Even though you have yet to prove anything. All right, what's up? I have no idea what sort of harebrained idea you have in mind, but <laughs> there's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Besides, how, may I ask, do you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Look, I feel bad doing this to you, but I got work to do, so we're done here. Sorry, but we are not finished yet. Boy, you're stubborn. <laughs> I suppose you're basing your accusations on something. I'll show you what I'm basing my accusation on, with evidence. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. First we're gonna press all of the things. Like we do. I have no idea what sort of harebrained idea you have in mind. My accusation is a harebrained idea, is it? You tell me, <laughs> I'd say it is. After all, there's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Who made that mountain? So, oh, and what pray tell kind of evidence are we talking about here? Jim was my partner, so you can't say I had a motive for killing him. And that's it. There's not even an anthill, let alone a mountain. But it's more than enough, wouldn't you agree? Might I recommend that you review what the word evidence means? It doesn't change the fact that the evidence doesn't point to me as the killer. Besides, how may I ask you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Hold it. Unfortunately, I believe I have already shown how earlier. Your speculations mean nothing, as I still insist that I could not gain access to your room. What should I do now? Should I raise an objection? Yes. You claim to have had no way to open my door. However, is that really the honest truth? <laughs> All right, I'll humor you. Go ahead, shoot! Very well then. I propose that you use this to open my door. Let's see. The master key would be what you used. Could also be possibly be the door, but I think it's just the key at this point. I believe you were able to open my office door with the master key, no less. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on for one second. <laughs> I never laid a finger on that key, as you already know. Precisely. You were able to open my door without lifting a single finger. Well, maybe you did. But only to direct. Huh? That's right, you use your finger to direct this person to open my door with the key. You got Maggie to do it for you! You had asked Miss Bird to open your own office door for you, yes? 
<laughs> yeah, I kind of forgot my key at home. <laughs> Happens a bit too often for my taste, you know? But the room you had this bird opened at the time was not your own, was it? Uh, what? You have quite the imagination. But why don't we ask the girl herself whose door she opened, shall we? Um, I'm certain that it was Mr. Portsman's door, sir. I checked the number plate to make sure I was opening the right door, sir. See, Zena's burden backs up my story. Yeah, what if you had misled her to fool her into thinking what you wanted? <laughs> and how do you suppose I did that? By switching the number plates on her doors, for example. That's right! They do slide out pretty easily! Furthermore, you then use one other thing to give a very strong impression. That the door she was opening was yours and not, in fact, mine. What was it that Mr. Portman used to make Miss Bird think that it was his room? He moved his basketball hoop! What? The basketball hoop, sir? It's quite the peculiar fixture in any hallway, let alone a hallway in this building. Which is why it left an unusually strong impression on you. It's an object perfectly suited to sit just outside the office of a peculiar prosecutor. <laughs> That's very true, sir, because there was a basketball hoop sitting there. I thought the door we was hoping had to be Mr. Portman's. There are signs that the hoop has been moved. To sit in front of my office, to be sure. Uh, I see, so that's how you throw suspicion on people. And thanks for the tip. But I think your conjecture is a little off the racetrack. Changing your story time? Okay, rebut me if you can. And I'll butt you again. Now you're just spouting nonsense. I had the girl open my office door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. You don't have a single reason to suspect me. I got a note that you didn't seem to notice so under your door. So he intends to claim his innocence to the end, does he? Hmm. I'm as pure as innocent as my jacket that I don't wear most of the time for some reason. And Miss Bird is as dirty and guilty as the jacket she wears. My jacket's not dirty, I'll have you know. I just washed it yesterday. Please calm down, for I intend to show who is the one truly covered in slime here. Okay, we're gonna press on through. Now you're just spouting nonsense. No, you. Nonsense, you say? Yeah, because I'm telling the truth here. I had to go up my office door. Hold it. Using the master key, of course. Sure, you have a problem with that? That is what the master key is for, right? Perhaps we should pace, place it in an elaborate labyrinth of some sort for people like you. After that, I was in my room the entire time. Hold it. And what were you doing in your office? I was doing my usual training regimen. Training regiment? Were you going through your law books from start to finish? Mainly batting practice with some weights. Oh, and I jog when I get the chance. Well, you must be the buffest prosecutor we have. With the weakest legal muscles, it would seem. I was doing my usual workout. <laughs> you don't have a single reason to suspect me. Hold it. I think I've given you quite a few reasons, actually. But, but none of those would have stayed up on their own. Objection. What about all the evidence? It's all circumstantial. No judge will convict on such flimsy evidence. He seems to be trembling a little. One more little push, all I have to do is find the flaw in his testimony. Okay, it's definitely gonna be after that I was in the room the entire time, and I'm pretty sure we present the note that was given that was under his door. Found it under the door for the absent portsman, touch check button for details. If he'd been in his room, he probably would have noticed the note that was under it. Logic button, right on the forehead. That was a lie. What are you talking about? <laughs> how, how is that a lie? Like, I'm not gonna go to my own office and work out. Have you seen this, bud? Ugh, ugh. This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. A note? 
It was left under your door. Or did you not notice when you were in your office all day? And right here it says, but you're out. Oh. Oh dear. You were not in your room when the victim came to call on you. So then, where were you? And what were you doing? <laughs> Shall I explain it in full detail for you? You were busy snooping around in my room. The very room you had Miss Bird open for you. Objection. Th that's just nonsense! <laughs> you have no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me. Oh, but I do. I have very decisive evidence. No way! This is proof positive that you had Miss Bird open the door for you. Um... Wait. What is proof positive that Miss Bird did it? Oh, her prints are not on the door. Take that! I had your door dusted for prints. My door? <laughs> what for? Come on, I bet you didn't find anything. You sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything. And definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. Her prints? What do they have to do with anything? Let's put it this way. If she really was the one who opened your door, then her prints should naturally be on the doorknob she touched. Ah! Further, all of the prints on my office doorknob have been wiped clean off. I can only assume it's because Miss Bird's fingerprints were on it. Don't you think it's time you gave up your charade? We know you stole into my office with the intent of stealing something from me. And Detective Faith found you out. Possibly because he heard sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on leave. Mr. Portsman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. And I had the misfortune to return. When I did, you had to threaten me as you escaped. <laughs> as I said when you had the gun to my back, no one gets away with committing murder in my office. <laughs> I just was so funny, pal! That took uh, that look as stiff serious as on the face of this office's finest prosecutor, as he makes a huge mistake in accusing me of simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edward just explained it all, and he even backed it up. You're the murderer. Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already. And as I said earlier, it's all so circumstantial. So full of conjecture. You say you check my doorknob for prints? Well, I can readily confess that I'd wipe that knob down well. Eh? I'm a little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that you had touched. Which is why I wiped the knob down as soon as I could after you opened the door. After that, it makes perfect sense that only Jim's and my own prints would be on there. You made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, as for the note Jim left for me, <laughs> do you know exactly when that was? For all we know, he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Why wouldn't you have picked it up then? Like early evening, for example. Are you saying you failed to notice a whole note in your doorway? Hey, my genius has failed times. <laughs> I was probably too preoccupied by work-related matters, although that's no excuse. This is fun out loud. There's no way you didn't notice a note that size. Uh, but you can't prove that, can you? Hmm. Say something, Mr. Edgeworth. Back me up here, sir. Ugh. Postman makes a good point. I can't prove that he didn't simply overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just now, as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for all of us if I told you sooner. <laughs> What's your airtight alibi where we can poke a hole in? In memory serves, you came back to the office around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. Oh. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. 
Do you really think it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask her all you like, so you'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. So yes, sir. I'll go check out his alibi, sir. Be right back. Good. Be useful. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Edwards, sir, I think we're in trouble. It's just like Mr. Portsman said. The guys down at Criminal Fist said they saw him at around 2 a.m. <clears throat> you see. <laughs> All of the evidence points to him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. The times are going to be important here for some reason. Your memory serves. You came back to the house at around 2 a.m., correct? Hold it. You are correct. It was around 2 a.m. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're spot on with the time. I remember checking my watch then, and make no mistake, it was 2. Oh, giving testimony like a bro. Okay, so you came back to your office at 2. And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation in the gunpoint with the culprit. It is as you say, however. Yeah, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the culprit. So tell me, did you see the person's face? Was it me who you saw? <gasps> it was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. Objection! Also, I closed my eyes a lot. Oh, come now. I'm sure you saw something. Try a little harder, why don't you? I'm beginning to feel like I'm, I'm the one being interrogated here. Oh, well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Hold it. So you paid the criminal affairs department a visit. Yep, right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. Hold it. Hmm, well, we did go and ask around to confirm your testimony. And it was just as I said, right? Yes, sir. A number of detectives said that they saw you at around that time. See? I had the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Ugh. Impossible. He actually does have the perfect alibi. What's wrong? Why the sudden sullen look on your face? Can't you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> I think we've reached the end of the line, and it's time to get off this crazy train. You there! You there! Sir! Please escort the young lady out. But remember, be gentle. Maggie! Did that come shoot? Is there nothing I can do? There must be a way to turn this situation around. If only I had a clue. Did I miss something that can help me cast doubt on his alibi? If who I make could not have been Portsman, then who could it have been? Hmm. I need to calmly think this through one more time, and with logic. Logic time! Press the logic button! Okay. The culprit rearranged my files twice, once before the murder and once after the murder. Why? The intruder I met could not have been Mr. Sportsman, then who could it have been? Other than the victim's gun that I found, could there be another gun in play here? I actually think that the different guns mean that potentially the person, because we saw the gunshot happen during the confrontation with him. So maybe the alibi and the handgun are related to each other. So, did we actually bump into Buddy in the dark before he'd been killed? There were two bullets left at the scene of the crime. One that robbed Mr. Faith of his life. And one that nearly robbed me of my jacket. However, the murder weapon only shows signs of being fired once. Meaning that it is entirely possible that a second gun was used in my office tonight. But seeing as how the killer had to steal Mr. Faith's gun, I doubt the killer had another gun up their sleeve. 
Therefore, the second gun could have been the property of an entirely different person. Which could mean that there was another person who paid a visit to my office tonight. So, I guess we connect the only two things we have left. So the culprit, the, so they were rearranged twice. Let's connect them! Supposing there was yet another visitor tonight, that would also resolve the issue of why my shelves were appended twice. We know that the shelves were disturbed once before and once after the murder, so it shouldn't be much of a stretch to think that it was the work of two different people. Once by the person who stole the victim's gun and then killed him with it. And once again after the murder by our second culprit, who was the owner of the second gun. If we suppose the second culprit's gun was the one that was pointed at my back. Objection! Mr. Portman, it seems that I need to amend my assumptions regarding this case. Great, so you finally come to your senses. Mr. Edgeworth! So what are you saying? This has been a big misunderstanding on my part from the start. I had assumed that the person I ran into was the killer, but that may not be the case. What do you mean? The person I ran into was just your average thief. A thief? But, sir, doesn't that cause some sort of, um, contradiction in the facts? Not at all. It simply means that the killer was someone else. And it means that in actuality, two culprits stole into my office tonight. What do you mean, two? It explains both why my shelves were disturbed twice, and how there were two guns. Mr. Portman tricked Miss Bird and gained entry into my office. Objection. Now you're just leading the argument. You still don't have any actual proof, you know. If you could please go along with my hypothetical scenario for now, Mr. Portsman. In the end, if you really are innocent, you should have nothing to worry about. Gah. Now then, returning to my scenario, Mr. Portman was out to steal something from me. Which is why he checked my secret safe and ransacked my shelves. This is the first time. So then, this would be when the files were put back in the wrong order, right? Correct. And then, just when he was about to look somewhere else, who should walk in but his own partner, Mr. Faith? Why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? He probably had business with Mr. Portsman, which is why he was in the area. But that's when he noticed sounds coming from my office, would be my guess. Oh, because you were supposed to be away, right? Then he must have thought it was odd, so he came into this office to check it out. Correct. And as a detective, that was the right thing to do. But when he came in, he found his own partner standing there. Because it was Mr. Portsman, Mr. Faith probably let his guard down. But Mr. Portsman was not so merciful as to let him have, leave alive. He waited for a chance and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him. He silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. This was the moment in which the first shot was fired, the one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Portman wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that, because he had also left the fake dying message behind. This is complicated troublemaking, you know that? Well, if things were as simple as that, then all would be solved. However, there was yet another visitor to my room, and this is where it gets complicated. There was another? Visitor, sir! Yes, and this other person's objective was also to steal something from me. Now then, even after Mr. Portsman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. However, this new visitor had no way of knowing that, and so, they stole the master key from the security guard's room, and then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed, and it seems that he found their prize. The stolen zero file, right, sir? Correct. Only, just as the thief was about to leave with the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during their brief encounter. So the shell's getting messed up twice, and two bullets. It was all because two different people were doing those things, at two different times. Precisely. So now do you see, Mr. Portsman? 
the person I met was just a thief and not, in fact, Mr. Faith's killer. Your alibi for the time frame in which I ran into the other person is now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the first culprit's visit. <laughs> What's so funny, pal? Absolutely splendid. Your scenario explains everything. Of course it does. It's Mr. Edgeworth after all. But you know, it still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. Hmm. Supposing if. That's a big if. Your theory is right. It would indeed render my alibi, which has withstood scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument, for which you have no evidence. Your supposition that I was the first visitor. Good, and Mr. Edgeworth, you can't let him get away with that, sir! But he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I don't believe this. Don't worry, Maggie. I'll do something if I must. You know something? I find your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Edgeworth. If the person you met really was just a plain old thief, then why is that person not your main suspect? That is, if your theory is correct. Hmm. That thief you ran into should be a real suspect, wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. I'd hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was trained in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down at criminal affairs. <laughs> so I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. So you think we should be out or there looking for the thief? Of course. Now isn't the time to be wasting time on dead-end discussions. I don't think it's all that at all dead-ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? <laughs> I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Okay. Time to press. Thief you ran into should be a real suspect, wouldn't you say? Anybody but you, huh? Actually, no, I wouldn't. Why not? That's elementary. The dying message, of course. Mr. Faith's killer very clearly left those letters on the spines of those files. And it was after they were on there that the thief stole one of them. You mean the zero files, right? And that's how we also know the letters themselves were set up and not from Mr. Faith. If the thief was the killer, do you think they would try to undermine themselves? Ah! Yeah, maybe the killer just didn't think of that either. Yeah, that must be it. Maybe, just maybe. We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. Hold it. You just get to pivot back to that? Okay. Once escaped, I highly doubt a thief would linger nearby. Well, you never know. Maybe they didn't get what they were really after. Oh, you talk of you know quite a bit about this thief. It's nothing like that. I have no idea about anything, after all. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. But according to Mr. Faith's note... Hold on, I thought we already cleared that up. Didn't we say that Jim left that note for me in the early evening? If you had to prove that he left that at a different time, say, just before he was murdered... I don't have any, no. You see, so I insist again that I was in my office the entire time. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down at criminal affairs. Why didn't you go there with uh, Mr. Faith? Ah, that's because he said he was tired and was going to take a quick nap. You know, those sofas in the hallway, he likes to sleep on those. He doesn't have his habits. And what of the evidence he brought? They were the things related to yesterday's case. Just two items. A gun and a pendant. Interesting. This piece of testimony seems too crucial to let slip through the cracks. He brought me two items. I just added it to the testimony. A gun and a pendant that are related to yesterday's case. Hold it. Yes! A gun, you say? A gun and a pendant. Yeah, this gun, which was the murder weapon. 
and this pendant, which belonged to the victim. And why were you taking them to criminal affairs? There was something in a past case file I wanted to compare those two to. But all this has nothing to do with this case right now. Anyway, I believe you'll find the long paper trail I left to be of to your satisfaction. Hmm, this all is all matching up with that Detective Gumshoe found out. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. Hold it. I can't expect you to know, can I? Nope. But I guess you can expect me to take a guess based on logical deductions. <laughs> oh, then let's see you deduce. Jim waited for me to leave and then stole the master key. For the purpose of sneaking into your room, of course. And that's when Miss Bird caught him red-handed, and the murder occurred. It's all exactly as I had laid out earlier. I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Okay. So, most likely is that new piece of evidence that we've uncovered. The gun and the pendant that are related to yesterday's case. Do I present our current gun? Believe to me, the murder weapon. It looks a lot like that. I'm gonna present it. Objection. Nope. I must object to your line of logic. In which part do you have an objection to? It's. Yes, well. Stay cool, Mr. Edgeworth. You're no good when you're all flustered. You gotta stay cool, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't freak out, Mr. Edgeworth. Dick is right for a change. How did it come to this? Calm down, Miles. Listen carefully and think everything through a bit more rationally. Okay. Um. Oh, 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 the note says three items. The note says, I brought the three pieces of evidence and you only told me two of them. We need to press that a little harder. Only two pieces. I believe the proper phrase here is, you fail. Uh, excuse me? You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Portman, as you intend to keep evidence hidden from me. What are you talking about? I, I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here's a piece I think you should read carefully. Ah, uh, it says Mr. Faith is bringing three pieces. Yes, and this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. He, I can't believe I got to get tricked in by simple arithmetic. Arrgh! Where is the missing piece of evidence? Ah, uh, it's, um... You have it, don't you? Only the guilty would make such a face. Detective Gumshoe. You know what they're saying, sir? I'll pat the guy down from head to toe with relish. Hmm. Whoop! Don't get any closer, I'm warning you! This is all part of the investigation, pal! So don't think about stopping me! No! Hey, what's this? He had this on him, sir! Despite what you said, it would appear that you do have something to hide. But why would he hide something like that? There's only one reason why anyone would hide evidence of this caliber. Because it would unequivocally point to that person himself as the real killer. <coughs> Let's examine this videotape in a little more detail. For the section of the tape that will drive the last nail into his coffin. Okay, what's the title of the video? KGH incident. The KGH incident. That's a police case number. That's a police case number, sir. Does that mean this video is evidence from that case? Interesting. However, what's recorded on this isn't what's important right now. Let's give the casing a thorough once over. Okay, so it's not that. Oh, there's blood on it! Ah, oh, that's blood, isn't it? Yes, and I believe this is what the good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. The blood is still fresh. You mean this might be the Dr. Face blood? No! No, you got it all wrong! No amount of denial can save you. We have but to run a blood test to find the truth. You told us that you had received evidence from the victim earlier. 
Now you will tell us when and how did the victim's blood find its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious! Was it the moment of his death? Did Detective Faith have this videotape on his personage when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that! Not even if we were to examine this tape for fingerprints. Ah! If I had to take a guess, I'd say that the only ones on here would belong to the murderous you and Mr. Faith. No! Impossible! I... I'm... Ah! Your golden medal! Oh no, don't swallow it! Well, he consumed a large amount of gold, went into a case of ecstasy, and then died. Mr. Boisman's been placed under arrest for the murder, thank the bloody faith, sir. Very good. And the results we got back from the lab text on the tape turned out to be real solid, sir. The blood work came back, and it was definitely Mr. Faith's blood on there. But as a bonus, they were able to lift a few of Mr. Faith's fingerprints as well. Thank you so very much, Mr. Edgeworth! I still can't believe I got to see your cool deduction skills outside the courtroom. I'm impressed beyond words, sir. It was nothing. I'm just sorry you got caught up in a murder in my office. Please accept my apologies. Oh, it was nothing. Really, compared to what I've been through, I mean. I consider myself lucky that I was only a burglary and a, and a murder this time, sir. If it had been a hold-up or a hot situation, I'd have thrown my hands up in the air. I think I'm finally rising up from a goddess, a misfortune, just an unlucky person. Something tells me we should have had a, hired a different person for security detail. You know something, sir? That Mr. Portsman really was one corrupt prosecutor. And why would you say he was corrupt? Well, I heard there were a number of suspicious things related to this court case, his court cases. There's even rumors about how some of the evidence he uses is forged, sir. Forged evidence, huh? Hmm. And they say even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. Oh, that guy was a complete disgrace to the entire profession! We never did get around to asking what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah, whenever we got near the topic, he just clammed up. Although we can be pretty certain that it was to steal something. It's just between you and me, sir, but, um, there's a rumor that some sort of huge organization is involved behind the scenes. Oh, well, well. With Mr. Portman not willing to divulge anything, it certainly lends credence to that rumor. It would seem that we haven't heard the last of this. Huh? The Mr. Portman isn't the bad guy? I didn't say that, but rather, that there are still many more mysteries for us to solve. For example, we still haven't figured out the significance of this piece of evidence. Uh, the stolen file. Take that! The person who stole this file, the other villain of the night. Yeah, I wonder who it was. What happened to the stolen pages? I wonder, who in the world was it that held me up at gunpoint? Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Yes? I came across this while I was processing your office earlier, sir. This card. It's a snitch! His Harry Potter came in here! He's playing Quidditch! What is it, sir? Is that a bird or something on there? It's not just any bird. It is the mark of the raven. A three-legged raven that doesn't have a head and is a ball and a golden ball that people catch when they play wizard sports. Even you should know what this is, detective. Oh, it's about that thing, isn't it? That great thief everyone's talking about. Yes, it is the mark of the great thief, Yadagarasu. His name is a mouthful. Under the mark of a legendary bird, the Yadagarasu is a noble to the end. A modern Robin Hood. Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagarasu appears and vanishes at will, and his hair looks a little like Phoenix Wright's, but exaggerated a little bit. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Though we don't know much about the thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Yatagarasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. The theft is always performed in silence, and always with perfection. Once a target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth. Instead, the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found is sent out to the mass media. 
along with this single card. Although it has been a while since the Adagrasu's last appearance. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth! Look, something's written on the back! What? Let me see. It's the location of where the thief put the stolen files! So the person who stole the contents of the file was the Yatagarasu. Hmm. Yatagarasu. Organization. Quite a few keywords are popping up in this mystery. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief, Yatagarasu. Looking back, I can't say I didn't see these events coming. For they were heralded by the incidents that began to occur two days ago. Hmm. Well, that's the end of that case. I think we made it through. A brand new episode has been added, but we'll have to play that next time. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. This has been a lot of fun. I'll see you guys next time. Press the buttons, subscribe if you haven't. Good night, and bye for now. <laughs>